Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish Gaming. This is Neon. This is Gaming News. Under 10 minutes on Clownfish Gaming. And we're going to talk about Tifa. We're going to talk about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And we're going to talk about a change in attitude, seemingly, with a lot of video game developers. And we're seeing this also with comic book publishers, too, and uh, Hollywood in general. It seems like the the age of uh, quote-unquote puritanical wokeness might be coming to a close and really all it took was the money running out and the studios realizing that there's very little money in censoring video games and covering up the ladies in the video games that uh, you know people like conventionally attractive characters in video games and in particular uh, Tifa has been the subject of a lot of discussion because uh, frankly her Boobs used to bounce a lot more, right? And uh, it seems like Square has been going out of their way to make sure her boobs don't bounce. Uh, they've been adding, you know, and there was a whole conversation. They had a whole like uh, sports top to her, uh, trying to say, well, it wasn't a practical outfit that she had. And it's like, it doesn't matter. We're talking about a world where you can summon giant monsters and ride giant birds and shoot magic out of your fingertips. Okay, it doesn't have to be realistic. It's a video game. But let's talk about this because it seems like Tifa's uh, uh, cleavage is leading the way to a new era of video games <laughs> because everybody likes this. They all like it. Um, now, that's not to say we don't have some problems here. In fact, uh, apparently Final Fantasy VII Remake is adding more clothes to Tifa. So let's uh, let's talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more gaming news. You'll get gaming news under 10 minutes here on Clownfish Gaming. Go out and get the audio version of these videos as well. Uh, you don't really need to see me. You don't need to see me bobbing up and down on the screen. You can listen to me. Again, Amazon, iTunes, uh, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. You can get uh, Clownfish Gaming News, also Clownfish TV, the audio edition. Uh, so this is coming from IGN. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth isn't out yet, but fans are all are already obsessing over Tifa. So the Rebirth uh, remake, Rebirth re, re remake, I guess it is, uh, may not be available until February 29th. Fans are already obsessing over Tifa's appearance in the game. It's not her appearance; it's her boobs, because we're not used to seeing boobs in video games anymore. A clip of the remade uh, Costa del Sol section of Final Fantasy VII has gone viral with Tifa trending alongside Aerith. The clip shows the party at the beach with clouds seemingly taken aback by Tifa and Aerith's swimsuits. The internet has already grown obsessed with one post from X slash Twitter user Genki Japan having clocked in 1.6 million views by itself. Let's take a look at, uh, let's take a look at this scene. Well, there we go. Yeah, he's, Literally, like, staring at her cleavage. Are we allowed to do that in video games? Modern year? Current year? So, yeah, the internet is going nuts for this. Uh, a lot of people going nuts for this. Uh, Tifa's popularity isn't anything new, of course, but the fact that she's trending over Aerith upon the release of a game already has fans fiercely debating the latter's fate. Tifa was trending in January, too, and they called for her to be added to Tekken 8. Yeah, she was, she's been in a couple of fighting games. It makes sense. I mean, she's a, she's a martial artist. She's a barmaid with, with, uh, with bite and, and boobs. We all know she's attractive, and I understand that, Harada said in a post on Twitter. But as yet, we have not decided anything about guest characters. Um, yeah, she was in uh, Urgeis. Wasn't she in Urgeis, I think? Uh, I know Cloud was. It's been a while since I played that. I need to play that again. That was actually pretty fun. Uh, Costa del Sol. The Costa del Sol section Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is just one of several cities players can explore. Yeah, we're finally getting out of Midgar. Unlike the first game, Final Fantasy VII Remake, the sequel takes place throughout a large portion of the world and also includes the likes of the Gold Saucer. The Lyre can be explored in the recently updated demo, too. Yeah, look at it. Uh, they gave it a 9 out of 10 on IGN. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth impressively builds off of what Remake set in motion, both as a best-in-class action RPG full of exciting challenges and awe-inspiring recreation of a world that has meant so much to so many for so long. I'm, I was concerned about this game, I gotta tell you, because I wasn't impressed with Remake. I really wasn't. We played it a little bit on the channel. I, I It was okay. 
But I was kind of expecting a one-to-one -one remake of Final Fantasy VII and not a rebuild. I didn't expect it to go down like Evangelion where they teased a remake with better animation in a tighter storyline. It was like, oh, no, no, the first movie, yeah. And then after that, we just kind of go off the rails and it, it's it's very clear it's a sequel or, uh, you know, another another telling of the story. And that's kind of where I think they're going with uh, Final Fantasy VII. But, um, yeah, if they were just up front about it, I think people probably wouldn't have lost it at first. But let's uh, let's talk about Tifa. Tifa getting clothed here. Deserto, Final Fantasy VII Remake Surprise Patch adds more clothes to Tifa. Hmm, this was just uh, a couple days ago. I guess you can't complain about it too much or they're going to go put some more clothes on her. Uh, it only covers a small portion of the storyline from the original game. Uh, that is true. This means the developers didn't need all the designs planned for characters and locations appearing in future installments. One area plan for a future game did appear in Final Fantasy VII Remake, but only in a, pre a brief scene. Cloud has flashbacks uh, to Nibelheim, where Sephiroth goes on a rampage and destroys his hometown. Uh, the Nibelheim flashback is featured prominently in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and its demo. This has resulted in a design change made for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth being retroactively applied to Final Fantasy VII Remake. According to the game's Steam page, a surprise patch has been released for Remake Integrate. According to users on the game's community page, the main change involves Tifa's outfit during the flashback. Uh, in Final Fantasy VII Remake, the younger version of Tifa wears a cowboy outfit in a brief flashback. In Rebirth, her design was altered to give her a black undershirt covering her cleavage. Yeah, that was that was what we heard, is that they were going with the undershirt. Bear is mentioning that Tifa was around 15 during the flashback. So yeah, she's younger. She's not letting it all hang out yet, nor should she because of her age. Uh, you know, I'm just saying. So it's unsurprising that Square Enix would extend her outfit in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. The younger version of Tifa was only briefly seen in Remake, but she has a much bigger role in the sequel. So more consideration was given to her design. Well, apparently when she goes to the beach and she is of age, they just, they just let it all hang out. Uh, look at that. She's jiggling away. Look at that. She's jiggling away. So, I, look, <laughs> everybody is happy. Everybody, well, I can't say that. Not everybody's happy. There are, there are a lot of activist types that are not happy about this. But a lot of people sing the praises of changes being made to Tifa. Uh, they were worried that Tifa was going to be nerfed in this game. Um, you know, that they were going to taper down and and i think tifa along with laura croft were two major first video game crushes for a lot of people male and female by the way and uh you know, we saw what happened with laura croft that they are making her more realistic for modern audiences and again this is a game that deals with magic and uh, we don't need to do that we don't need to do that in this game but it is a sign i think that game companies are going back to basics, I guess. They're going back to what works. Uh, it seems like comic book publishers are slowly getting, getting that memo too. Uh, Spider-Man, Ultimate Spider-Man is doing very well. And uh, also uh, Transformers going back to basics. And I think that they're starting to realize that making all these changes and then demonizing gamers for not liking these changes, it's not good for your bottom line. So many studios going out of business, so many studios laying off. And a lot of it has to do with, you know, the changes to the games and, the, you know, the political messaging and the censorship and all of that. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not hard to get these things right. It really isn't hard to get video games and comic books and anime and movies right. You just got to give people what they want and they'll pay for it. You know, stop lecturing the audience. Stop hiring people who just want to lecture the audience and just give people what they want and you'll make money. You'll be fine. I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe. We'll talk later.